So someone said, Harley, can you do a video? Someone said, Harley, do not can you do a video on on um why are you drinking coffee again? This isn't this is a coffee mug, but as you can see there's no coffee stains in there, but juice stains and beetroot juice. I'm not I'm not drinking coffee again. Someone said, do a video why are you drinking coffee again? I'm not drinking coffee. I've drunk a cup of coffee since nineteen ninety nine. Uh, this is water. This is my water mug. It's a coffee jug for water. So let's get into the video then. Uh, let's clear up the facts. Let's clear up the the, uh, the assumptions or whatever about me drinking coffee or whatever. So I haven't drunk a single cup of coffee since 1999. I've had caffeine since then in you know, caffeine drinks or gels or you know other sources of stimulants and stuff. But in terms of drinking coffee, I ain't a fan. I ain't a fan. And let's, let's talk about stimulants now. Let's get to the serious part of the video. I've had extensive use of stimulants, uh, both illegal usages and legal usages. And I'd say the legal stimulants, most of them pretty bad because they're so encouraged, especially coffee. Um, now, a lot of you might unsubscribe after watching this video because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to be attacking coffee. I'm going to talk about coffee and how the five ways it destroys fitness. It destroys your fitness, man. It one, you don't, you can't hydrate properly if you're drinking coffee. If you're drinking coffee regularly, you know, and this, this isn't. This isn't a video for me like to say, oh, you drink coffee, you're a bad person or whatever. This is just to educate people out there the truth about caffeine and other stimulants, and you can do whatever you want with that. All right? And I would recommend you don't have to give it up, but you should maybe, you can if you want, that's really good. But just cut the right back down. Cut right, cut your stims right back down, you know, and you'll find they actually do work better when you do use them. We'll get to that. So the number one reason caffeine inhibits fitness gains is that it doesn't let you hydrate properly. You know, caffeine's a diuretic, so it doesn't let you hydrate properly. You know, that's why I don't coach anyone who drinks coffee. You know, I was, I was a one-on-one coach because it just it won't let you get your maximum performance. It just drives you off the deep end. You can be glandular fever, burnout, you know, depression, anxiety, things like that. You know, don't eat enough, just poof, performance drops off. That's why you notice anyone I. Coach one on one, anyone who's maybe in my Adelaide group or you know, who's, a, who's a girlfriend or whatever, you notice their fitness just it goes right up. You know, their productivity goes right up because I pull stimulants out of the equation. You know, and then all of a sudden you can really get more rest, deeper rest. You can sleep better and just feel, feel fresher. Feel fresher. I had three hours sleep last night. Got up at like seven twenty eight or whatever. And went out, and ran a five k. Won the five k race this morning, Christmas Day. I'm probably going to have a nap soon later on, but I've had no stimulants today. You know? If I had stimulants, then I'm going to be all wired and like, eh, I'm not sleeping properly. But now I'll be able to go into my bed, have a shower, go into my bed and just lay down and chill for a bit, get really good recovery, deep recovery, versus be jittery on stims and missing that recovery window where your protein synthesis is getting enhanced and your glycogen restoration and all that stuff. So, you know, and yes, I did 200k ride and no stims. So today felt very fresh, you know, so it's really, really good. So I got to have good rest. Good rest is good recovery. So there you go. Over three hours sleep, it was enough. You get deeper rest when you're not on stims. Not that I recommend three hours sleep every night. What I'm saying though is when you do less stimulants, you will need less rest. You still need enough, you know. We'll get to that in a second about sleep. But so hydration, it doesn't let you hydrate properly because you'll be all jittery and not drinking enough water. Caffeine's a diuretic, so it's like forcing water out of your body. So you won't be able to hydrate properly, which means your blood volume will go get lower than it should be. That's why you see a lot of riders train, 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 but they're not that fast for how maybe how lean they are or how much they train. They're not that fast. And I'm like, what? It's because their hydration is poor. Their blood volume isn't where it should be. All that training, all that carbohydrates and stuff brings your blood levels up. But if you're you know, dehydrating with caffeine and stimulants, then it's just gonna, not going to be that top percent, the top 10, 15%, which you need to be really, really your, your best. And so caffeine doesn't let you hydrate properly. Another one is caffeine doesn't let you eat enough. The stimulants, Ritalin, Adderall, cocaine, caffeine, theobromine, they're all the same. They restrict appetite, so people use them. A lot of people use them for, to restrict eating. And so then you don't eat enough carbohydrate, people are like, that's good, because then I'll get slim. Well, I'm fucking slim, I'm lean as, Natasha's lean as, all us high carb, vegan crew are lean as. And you don't need to use stims to cut weight, because all that's gonna happen is you will slow down your thyroid function and then you become a weight storer and then you get caught up in intermittent fasting and breath aneurysm and one meal a day and develop big black circles under your eyes and end up 
space skedding out there in or what uh, in Hawaii Aloha hey I'm not a vegan anymore cuz I'm doing one meal a day and I'm feeling fucked and I need to try something different orthorexia anorexia never works man so caffeine it just inhibits eating that's why I tell anyone anyone who's ever had any eating issue anorexia or whatever they should never do stims or only under strict supervision they should never be given caffeine or coffee recreationally or whatever they should never do that so I would never never give um, never recommend coffee to anyone out there who's had some sort of eating issue that is like the worst why because coffee is this drug where people go, do you want a coffee? Do you want a tea? Do you want a coffee? Do you want a tea? You can go to 10 different places and then get to have 10 different cups of coffee because people are like, hey, do you want a coffee? Do you want a coffee? I get offered coffee um, so many times per week, even sometimes per day. And I just get the cup of coffee and I smash it across the room before I get the wall. No, I don't. I just say, no, I'm good, thanks. You know, or, my, if, or I tell my story, I haven't had a cup of coffee since 1999, blah, blah, blah. But I, I always make it polite. You know, always make it polite. So... Coffee is just this pervasive drug where it's just so encouraged. You know, after dinner, you fall asleep at dinner, you have a rest and a coffee. I have a coffee, 10 a.m., 10 p.m., have some small stims. Can't sleep, have some alcohol, have some Xanax, have some sleeping tablets, have some still knocks. Can't wake up in the morning, have more coffee. Can't, you know what I mean? So it's just this constant thing. Once you get on the stims, the anxiety is going to go up, and then you need some sort of anxiety medication to bring it down. Take away the stimulants, anxiety drops down. Calm puppy dog, chill puppy dog. The triglycerides getting lower. Um, stress is, stress brings up triglycerides. Simple as that. And with caffeine, it's like that's why. The reason why I, I mean I love that buzz, man, on all those stims, but I keep them very, 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 very low key because I understand that they can rob the adrenals of you know, energy and you know, things like that. So they, they're they're a credit card, all right? They're a credit card. Only use them when you've got a lot of energy and you want to go that little extra percent. You know, you've had enough sleep, enough sugar, enough water, enough recovery, and then you want to go that little sharpening end, end up there, then yeah, okay, that's fine. But using caffeine because you're tired, using caffeine for like a, a weight loss thing or stimulants for what, so man, it'll work, but it, it'll fuck you up. It'll come back and bite you in the ass, guaranteed. It'll give you, before, before you blow out with weight gain, you'll have anxiety and depression and insomnia and mood up and down. Yeah, most of us are pretty crazy as it is. Why well, take something that makes it even more crazy? So that's why I'd never date a coffee drinker. Couldn't. I can't, I can't even really be, um, you know, yeah. It's you, you Get off it, man. Trust me, get off it. You'll be a lot more grounded and chill. Um, so third, that's a, so not enough water, can't hydrate properly, can't get enough carbohydrates in, you know. And some people are like, oh, that's really good. I don't want to eat too many carbohydrates. Cause, and those people, I can't really help because they're so lost already. It's almost like they have to hit rock bottom and get obese or get a, or get total performance decay before they really understand what's going on with carbohydrate. You know, I can't really help those people. <laughs> you know, you can only help so many people. You can only help people who really want the best. And third one is is caffeine doesn't let you rest properly. You know, I'm not talking about sleep. I'm talking about like resting. You have some coffee and you're like, yeah, let's go do some stuff. And you, you're proactive and you get, you're buzzing all around but you're doing a higher workload than your adrenal gland really wants to do. And your cortisol and all that, your hypothalamus, the pituitary, and your hormone, your endocrine system, you're doing a higher workload than your endocrine system wants to do. So you're burning really, really hard. And again, that's why we see so many athletes, professionals, they get on the hormone, hormones, the testosterones, the estrogens, the thyroid meds, the you know all those things to, to sort of bring up what that caffeine's robbing. All right. So if you're a professional athlete, then yeah, you've got the team doctor, you can get all these hormone drugs that will offset the decaying factor of stimulants. So you put the stimulants in, the hormone's going to go down, you need to bring them up. Yeah, so that's what I mean. It doesn't let you rest properly. Not about sleep, it's not resting properly because you're doing too much. Yeah? And then your endocrine system is taking a beating. That's why you see so many people who are on hormone drugs, when they start doing stims, they just boom, they drop right down. The performance just drops off. Despite heaps of training, big workload, they just drop off. So you, you can only overtrain if you're doing stimulants. If you're not doing stimulants, you can't overtrain in terms of endocrine wise. Because your body will go, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to chill today. You know, your fatigue will be more palpable. You'll be able to really feel it a lot more. Stimulants, they, they lower perceived exertion, don't they? They take away that fatigue, you know, perceived fatigue. So. Most people when they're tired have more coffee, have more Ritalin, have more pills. 
worst thing you can do for your fitness and your mood, your anxiety, everything, your outlook on life. So yeah, really be very strict with stimulant intake. Very, very strict. Be very responsible with it as well. And if you know anyone with anorexia or whatever, don't fucking encourage them to drink coffee, man, or tea or anything. Don't encourage that at all. Because all you're doing, especially at a recreational level, you're just like, hey, come and you know, have a coffee after the ride or after the run or whatever. And I see this all the time in the last 20 years. Because so many people with eating disorders, or whatever, we get into cycling, we get into running because it keeps us you know, slim and lean, you hang out with other people, and you can sort of, guys that are going to be lean for a race or a run or whatever, you know, can't be too heavy. And that can be okay, but again, it can, it's a quick, it's just thin ground, isn't it, between being light and being too light. It's a pretty sort of thin little fence there. And so stimulants can help people, you know, fall off that fence pretty fucking quick into a bad place. And then you're losing a lot of training of benefits and fitness and mood and, and life quality. At the end of the day, everything I talk about is all about increasing life quality. So we don't get enough rest. We don't get hydration properly. We don't get enough carbohydrates. All these things affect our thyroid health, emotional health, all the, all the, all the health, the whole body. Uh, another one would be sleep. You can't sleep properly. You know, because you've got the buzz going on. You have a coffee at night time or in the morning, sometimes you're buzzing all day and you don't eat enough, don't drink enough and you can't really sleep properly. So maybe you did get enough rest, maybe you just chilled out, but you didn't get that really deep sleep and then your recovery is dropping off, your performance is dropping off, your mood, your hormones are dropping off and all these things start to cascade off. So if we're not getting enough sleep, then we do the sleeping pills and have sleep issues and look at all the sleep clinics out there, man. It's like, can you imagine? Like there's sleep clinics out there. Just take away the fucking coffee, man. Take away the stims, the cacao, cacao, or the Ritalin or whatever. Take those away just for a few weeks. And all of a sudden, you're like, oh my God. Increase your carbohydrate intake, increase your water, get some more sunshine, you'll be sleeping like a motherfucking baby. Yeah, it's crazy. I used to do sleep deprivation studies. They'd pay me to be like a guinea pig and I'd be there trying and stay awake for 48 hours. And it wasn't that I'd have any caffeine. And uh, it was really, 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 really cool. But, you know, and they're getting all this, like, research for people with sleep issues. And so people just do too much fucking coffee, mate. Too much stims, too much tea. And green tea, same thing. Even Dr. Gregor telling people to drink, like, five, six, seven cups of green tea a day. No wonder that guy's not in shape. No wonder his wife isn't fit because no one, and that's not being me being mean. That's just, like, you can't be fit with that much stimulants unless you're also doing the hormones with it to offset the damage the stimulants are doing. And it's not going to have the fitness because your hormones are going to be like through the floor. It's not going to be healthy levels for athletic performance. Um, so yeah, we've got the sleep, we've got hydration, we've got the rest, we've got the carbohydrate. Another one is stims don't let you have you know your true self, you know, and which will affect your performance as well. They they make your focus you know very. Uh, if you're focusing on something that's not too good. You'd be feeling bad or whatever. The stims will make you focus even more on that. If you're focusing on good things, they can make you focus on that as well. So it can be, you know, whatever you focus on, that will amplify that. So if you're a person that has anxiety or maybe depressive thoughts or have certain episodes in your life and you're doing stims, that will magnify that, you know, and you can get yourself in a bit of trouble there. So that can also destroy your fitness. And I could go on and on and on about caffeine and stimulants. I could share a shit ton of stories over the years. But there's, there's a big reason. I love the feeling of stimulants. I love it. Everyone loves it. Everyone loves the feel, the feeling of stimulants at some point. But again, they have, you know, they have their downsides and you've got to be aware what the downsides are. So when you, let's say, when I, when do I use stims? I would use stims when I'm like, got enough sleep, water and sugar and I want to go a little bit extra, you know, a little bit extra. But even then, if I have to use anything, I make sure I'm drinking and eating enough when I'm on it. I'm also to take very, very small amounts and generally only in the morning, first thing. You know, but it's very, very rare I do that because I understand your body builds a tolerance to them. You need more and more and more. And then you don't, can't eat enough. You don't drink enough. You don't sleep enough. You don't rest enough. Your thoughts can be a little bit <laughs> off of the fairies. You know? So it's, it's really, uh, I see a lot of people's depression out there. A lot of it. A lot of these you know, schizophrenic or bipolar negative episodes. And due down to stimulant abuse and use. Even just you know, a cup, cup of coffee a day can be too much for many people. So just t try and experiment, just cut it out of your life for a bit and just chill, get in touch with your fatigue, drink more water, you know, get your carbs in and just, just chill, man. And you'll, you'll notice a profound benefit in your life, guaranteed.
go and fucking tell you man it's like crazy I mean even yeah I can tell you more stories we're already on 15 minutes in it's uh caffeine I ain't a fan yeah I ain't a fan it definitely it, it is uh it is it's like alcohol it's a pernicious drug if you do it occasionally very very rarely yeah not an issue but this daily use of caffeine and alcohol I ain't a fan and if I had to compare alcohol versus caffeine I'd say alcohol is far better like let's say you have a beer a day or a glass of wine a day that's going to be far healthier than a cup of tea or a cup of coffee a day in my in my experience you know both ain't healthy but the alcohol in low dosages is better than the caffeine in low dosages I'd say in terms of you know all the things I've mentioned here but both are pernicious drugs that need to be only consumed in severe moderation and by certain types of people who understand the consequences and who understand the responsibilities that must be in place to keep these drugs of society in check from causing too much damage or routine abuse, etc. There you go, that's my thoughts, comments and questions. I'm not drinking coffee, this is a coffee mug, but it's more water and juice and banana smoothie mug. I got this in 2014 in a bike race in Thailand. So why don't I drink coffee again? After seven after 19 years it's gonna be up to, it's gonna be 20 years this year not in october 2019 it'll be 20 years since i've had a cup of coffee maybe i'll have a cup of coffee to celebrate that one but yeah that's why i'm drinking coffee i'm not drinking it from a coffee mug water crazy don't be an undercut motherfucker cut fuck cut fuck cut fuck fuck cut the fuck up motherfuckers get their motherfucking carbohydrates you don't be an undercut motherfucker cut fuck cut fuck